Hey guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. So today, again, we're tackling another ideal gas problem, ideal gas transformation. This is the beginning of the thermodynamics foundation we want to build to be able to solve more complex problems. Problem statement reads, 0.5 kilograms of air undergoes a polytropic compression. The polytropic index may be taken to be 1.3. The air has an initial, temperature of, initial pressure of 100 kilopascals and an initial temperature of 20 Celsius. At the end of the polytropic process, the air has a pressure of 300 kilopascals. We are to find the initial volume of the air in meters cubed, find the final volume of the air in meters cubed, find the temperature of the air at the end of the process in Kelvin, find the work required to compress the air in kilojoules, and draw on a PV diagram with respect to initial final and initial isotherms. Once again, they give us the ideal gas for air, and we know this is for air because it says so here on the index, but it also is per kilogram of air instead of mole, which is the same value for whatever gas we choose. Right, so once again, let's make this visual. Let's try, try to draw this down. Remember always that we can approximate air. Air can be approximated to be an ideal gas for most situations. Only under special circumstances, you won't be able to approximate this to any ideal gas. For most of your thermodynamics courses, you'll be able to do that. Um, and also remember that when we're talking about gases, generally, our temperature in Celsius doesn't really mean much, so let's go ahead and sum up this with 273 to have this as 393 and have it in Kelvin. So let's draw the two states we have. I just want to make it a bit more visual. I'm going to have state number one, state number two. Let's draw the little container in which this air is in, right here, and we have air inside. And then because we know there's no mass going in or out, this is going to start showing up later on when we go to more advanced situations, then we know the mass of the air is the same throughout. What do we know about state one? Well, we know it's at 100 uh, kilopascals, right? So 100 kilopascals is the pressure. We also know its temperature, which is a 293, which is transformed from Celsius to Kelvin. And on state two, we know that this is at 300 kilopascals. That's all we know for state two for now. But we know one more thing. We know this, when we go from here to here, we have a polytropic process, right? polytropic process. And what does that mean? Well, a polytropic process literally means that by definition, the pressure one times volume one to the index, right, the index of the polytropic process has to be equal to the pressure on another state times the volume on another state to that same index. And this is the same thing for any state that we have. We can have any state transformation. So P to the um, I, I guess, let's just put it I, V to the I to the N, right? So it doesn't matter how many transformations we have, as long as it's polytropic, this is always going to be uh, the case. The other thing we know is that the mass inside this container here is 0.5 kilograms, and that does not change regardless of how many processes we uh, that this air undergoes. And what is the game plan here? Well, like on all of these thermodynamics problems, on ideal gas problems, it's always going to be the same thing. Know that one state we have completely defined, right? We have two independent thermodynamic properties. We have pressure and temperature. So we can find anything we want for this state. We can find the volume, the entropy, the enthalpy, the internal energy, anything we want, any thermodynamic property. And then we can use that to be able to calculate a second one for the second state, which at the moment we only have the pressure, right? So that's going to be our game plan. We're going to first start finding the initial volume of air, which is one of the things that are asked of us, which is uh, part A, right? So let's start by doing that. So if we want to know what is the volume, we know this ideal gas is they have to obey the ideal gas law. This can be RT or, sorry, MRT or NRT, depending on the R that we use, if we use this in, um, the, depending on the unit of the R. And no, the only unknown here is the volume. So we can solve for volume. This is quite straightforward. We want volume one. Then we just take the mass that we have, the R that we have, T1 that we have, and divide that by the pressure that we also have. Let's go ahead and do that. We have the mass of 0.5. The R was given to be 1.287, which is a typical value. It's quite useful to memorize this because you're going to be using it a lot if you're doing any thermodynamics course. Temperature, we convert it right to so 293 Kelvin. And then I'm dividing the whole thing by the pressure. And the pressure was also given to be 100. Okay, kilo, this kilo, this kilo. Then we have kilograms and kilograms, Kelvin and Kelvin. And when we divide the Pascal by the Joule, we're going to get meters cubed, right? Okay, brilliant. So we're going to get this answer in meters cubed. And that's going to be the first part of the question that we want to solve. And we get about, what did I get? About like a 0 0.420455. So we can go ahead and approximate that to 0.42 meters cubed. Okay, so that's the answer for part A. Okay, next up, we want to find what is B. 
the final volume of your, so we want to find V2, right? What is the V2? What is the volume of your on state 2? Um, note this is a polytropic process, so this is valid here, right? And know that on this equation, the only unknown is actually V2. We have the index given to us in the problem statement. We have a pressure 1, we have pressure 2, we have volume 1 that we just found. So we can go ahead and just make use of this characteristic of polytropic processes and solve for V2. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Okay, so if I'm looking for V2, then I'm going to have V2 to the n equals P1 V1 to the n divided by P2. P1 is 100, P2 is 300, both in kilopascals, so the units cancel out, both of them. And then the unit of whatever we use, V1 is going to be the same unit for P2, right? And we have here point 0.42, right? Point 0.42. So the point 0.42, we just cube is what we're going to get our uh, answer in. And this is to the n as well. n is, it was given a problem statement, and that is 1.3. So this is to the 1.3. We solve this piece of math, we get that V2 to the n equals 0 0.1079. So big number, 0 0.1079. Seven nine it keeps going, and then what we need to do is obviously take the square of that number. So we're going to get v two equals the square of n, which is one point three. So not the square is a root of one point three of this number here. And we get the v two equals zero point approximately zero point eighteen. And also meters cubed. So that is the part b, and that also gives us the second independent thermodynamic property of state 2, which allows us to completely define state 2, right? And then we go and check part C, what's the temperature at the end of the process in Kelvin? So now that we have two properties, now we have these two guys, now this is easy, right? Because PV equals NRT, you can use that to find this next part here. So let's do that. So part C, what is T2? Well, P2, V2 equals mass R T2. So therefore my T2 will be equal to P2, V2, Mass and R. We have everything, so you can just plug and play, right? 300 kilopascals times the 0.18 which is found meters cubed. That gives us kilojoules unit wise. And then we're dividing that by 0 0.5, which is a mass, so kilograms, and 287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we're going to have the answer in Kelvin. And this turns out to be about 377.14 approximately. And that's in Kelvin. We always make sure to check, right, just to make sure we're not doing any mistakes. So we have kilopascals times meters cubed divided by kilogram, or kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So kilopascals in meters cubed gives me kilojoules, kilograms, kilograms. And we have kilo the Kelvin on top there, so all good. Part D, what does D say? D, find the work required to compress the air. So we're going from 100 to 300, we are indeed compressing this air, and we know that as long as there's a change in volume, there will be work involved, right? Energy used in form of work. And we know there's a change in volume, right? Because we know we actually calculated volume 1 and we calculated volume 2, so we know there's a change in volume. So let's go and go ahead and calculate the work required to go from state 1 to state 2. We know work is defined as the integral of P dV as we go from one state to the next. Now, there are two ways you can go about this. You can either memorize the equation that it's a special case for polytropic process, and then you can use that equation, or you can just remember the fundamentals and work your way through it. Okay, let's go ahead and do the latter. So what we know about the asymptotic process, we know that PV in is a constant, right? It's a constant. And we can call just the constant, let's just call it C to simplify things, right? So that means that, so therefore, P is the same thing as a constant divided by V to the N. So I'm going to sub that in. So we're going to have work equals the integral as a group from 1 to 2 of dV times, so yes, we can do that, the constant divided by V to the N dV. Right, because it's a constant, then it can leave the integral and just multiply it all throughout. So that's going to leave us with dv of v to the n. So that's a very simple integral to do. We can go ahead and do that. That's going to give us the constant times the volume minus 1 minus n plus 1 minus because it was down here, negative 1 plus 1 because that's the result of the integral, and we have to divide that by the same coefficient, right? And that's as we go from state 1 to state 2 or v1 to v2. Okay, so at this point here we can use this array because we can set back in the constant where we have the c, we can set back in pv to the n, and we can use the values that we know or we can keep going and actually get the general formula for this. Up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. So we'll just go ahead and write keep, uh, so I'm going to write back so that c is just pv to the n, and we're multiplying that by v to the minus n plus 1 divided by minus n plus 1. 
could have been part of that, probably make more sense. That's all right. As we go from v1 to v2. Okay, we have everything we need, so we might as well just plug in information. We're not trying to solve the general equation just now. We could have keep going and just find the general one, but for our case, we have everything we need, right? What are the things that we need? Well, we have the constant, we have pv to the n, because that is, for instance, 100 times the 0.42 that we found to the 1.3. So pv to the n. And mind you that, obviously, because this is a constant, it could have used p2, v2, right? So 300 and 0.18, same as root and rise. Um, what else do we have? We also have the, and we have the two volumes. So plug and play. Let's do it. Uh, 100 times 42 to the 1.3. Multiplying that by uh, 0.18 of the 1 minus 1.3. 1.3 being the index of the polytrack process, and minus 1.3, subtracted by 0.42, that's v2, right? So we might have just put here v1, that's 0.42, and v2, that's 0.18. Okay, so that's where this guy came from. And this is where this guy came from. Um, again, 1 minus 1.3 divided by 1 minus 1.3. Oh, plug all in. We get that work equals, let's put the whole thing, work equals negative because obviously we're going from the gas is not expanding, it's contracting, so it releases energy as it does so, right? It doesn't need energy. It doesn't need to absorb energy for that, it can release energy. So it releases about 40 kilojoules as it's being compressed from 0.42 to 0.18 meters cubed. Brilliant. Uh, okay, last part, part E. Part E asks us, what is the, I forget, Draw the PV diagram with respect to initial and final isotopes. Okay, fair enough. Let's try it. So, E. I'm going to have pressure in kilopascals. And I'll have volume in meters cubed. And we're going to need two isotherms, right? The first one that goes, it goes like so, for the uh, 293 and one for the what was it that we found 377 I think yeah Kelvin that's right so let's go ahead and say this is the 293 Kelvin this is the 377 Kelvin isotherms okay cool uh, so we have two pressures and two volumes right for the first state and second state we can go ahead and write those down we know our first state is 100 at 100 Kelvin that's uh, our kilopascals and at point four be two meters cubed. And our second state is at, I'm going to do that maybe a bit closer here, uh, 0.18 meters cubed and 300, yeah, 300 kilopascals. Right, so all we need to do is make them find each other. Probably not the best idea because I drew it all out of the isotherm, so I'm going to put my 0.42 here. 0.42, there you go, right there on the isotherm, and we also want the 300 there we go. Oh, should have drawn the isotherms afterwards. That would have made more sense. Cool, so this is state two. So this is state one over here, down here, state one. Over here we have state two with their respective um, pressures and volumes. We're going from state one to state two. So this is what we're doing from here to there. Make that better. There you go. Cool. There you go. Our PV diagram is drawn. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope this helped you out. Don't forget to sign up, subscribe to the channel so you're always up to date with our latest posts and videos.